All right, everybody. Hope everyone is having an awesome day today. We are about to kick things off here for June's elevator pitch. Very excited to bring on three very awesome sponsors. We've got Audit, we have Comet, and we have Wasabi. And um, we will be um, we'll be kicking things off in just a few moments here. Um, of course, we do have uh, Mike, Gretel, and Matt. How are you guys all doing today? Doing great. Doing great. great. It's, it's 6 a.m. on a Friday where I am. That is right. That is so right. yeah. <laughs> Gretel, um, you know, Comet is based out of New Zealand. So uh Gretel, thank you for, for starting your day off extra early for us. Appreciate that. I'm gonna finish at two and I'm gonna the start the beers are gonna start at 3 p.m. So this is all good. <laughs> there we go. Beer 30, right? <laughs> So um, we, we're very excited to bring you all here today. Thank you for joining us for our elevator pitch. Um, the biggest thing with our elevator pitch is we are bringing on three different IT vendors who will each have 10 minutes to give you their elevator pitch. Now, this is gonna be 100% about their products and services so that you can learn more about what they offer. Uh, as you, you know, you are probably, um, you know, in the boat as many MSPs looking to enhance their stack, uh, looking for new ways to increase uh, overall efficiencies, productivity, as well as, drum roll please, profitability. And so that's what we're here for today. Now, a few things to note, we are going to um, start off with uh, each of these presentations in alphabetical order, just to make sure Nobody feels as if we're giving one person, you know, a, you know, a better position than the other. So we just thought we'd we'd make it easy that way. Now, once each of our presenters are done with their presentation, what's going to happen is we'll open up our demo rooms. The demo rooms are set for uh, you to be able to join whichever demo room that you want, and you're able to bounce back and forth amongst the demo rooms. Now. There'll be some hands-on learning capabilities, but also more opportunity for those questions and answers. So please um, pull up your questions and uh, feel free to uh, get those asked during those demo room opportunities. Also, after the three have done their presentations, we're going to put a poll up. So if any of the vendors or all of the vendors you'd like to hear more from, you'll be able to complete that poll and then uh, they will reach out to you with some additional information. Last but not least, most importantly, some very exciting thing, a very exciting thing here is we have $250 of hard cold cash that one lucky winner is going to get. Now you do have to wait till the end. So please keep with us for the entire presentation. At the end, after all the presentations are done and the demo rooms are completed, we will randomly select one lucky person to receive that $250 cash. So uh, sound good, everybody? Yep, 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 yep. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick things off with Mike Brooks with Audit. And uh, Mike, uh, first and foremost, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. So so as always, in Dan fashion, we've got to put you on the spot. And we we got to have you tell us one thing about Mike that nobody knows. We want to hear something cool here. Well, you know, in this life, in, in, in the IT industry that I've been in for six years, seven years now, uh, most people know me as a sales and marketing person. I, I ran a marketing agency before I was with Audis. So I have a long history of being in the marketing and sales business. And that's what I consider myself a marketing sales professional. But most people don't realize that when I got out of college, I was an IT guy, which is funny to the people who know me and know that I should probably not be fixing anybody's computer. I'm like a human EMP. I come near your computer, it stops working. So I was actually working with, at that time, there were no, MSP wasn't a word, but I was working with a person who was an MSP. He was an outsourced guy. I, I managed him, which is laughable considering my <laughs> technology. I figured out really quick, I was not going to be good at technology. And here I am back in the technology world, loving it. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And uh so we always love to hear those kind of stories. We all we all have some new stuff that, you know, next time you run into to Mike, um, you know, at an IT conference, you can just go to him for your IT support. So um, there you we bring go. your computer over. There you go. So, uh, Mike, you are up. Um, you can go ahead and share your presentation. Um, we are going to start the timer. You'll have 10 minutes and um, it's all yours, my friend. Awesome. You guys see my screen OK? 
we see it. Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, audit is the top sales and business review presentation tool for MSPs. So uh, hopefully if you don't know about audit yet, uh, I'm going to give you a quick education on what audit is, starting with that it is a software as a service tool that MSPs use to quickly and easily create visual, simple, non-technical and persuasive sales presentations that close more high ticket IT deals with little or no price resistance. And and it kind of the reason audit exists is because there's a problem that MSPs face. And this is not to make fun of MSPs. This is something that I've heard them say about themselves for years is that big problem that MSPs face is this curse of knowledge thing, right? We all have it. We we want to educate our clients on all the things that we love, which are usually the technical details of what we do. Now the truth is client wants to see it this way. This way. This way. There we go. So the client wants to see it really, really simple. Now, everyone who sells, if you've been in sales for more than five seconds, you know that we know our product better than anyone else, right? We dive too deep into the technical details, even when we think that we don't. And whether you sell cars, whether you sell knives, whether you sell whatever you sell, there are technical details that the consumer of those things they're not going to understand. So for MSPs, it's a little bit harder because the technical details of what you guys do is as technical as it gets. So it's even harder to kind of keep that technical mumbo jumbo out of it, even when you're trying to. And I want you to think about any time you've ever tried to buy something where the salesperson confused you even a little bit. Did you end up buying that product? Probably not because a confused mind never buys. So well, I'm going to let this video walk you through, quick video, walk you through what a sales uh, audit looks like. You can generate an audit into either a printed report, which is what you're looking at, bound and printed, or you can generate it into a PowerPoint. So I could go over the same report with you right here on a PowerPoint on, on the screen. And it's really simple. You could see from this first page is very, very easy to understand, right? We go through each of those categories right? Security, man support, whatever you, you put this template together to decide what you're going to present. We go into the business impact. Everything is image driven, easy to understand. So easy that like a seventh grader could understand it. Then we show them the future state. We show them what we're going to propose for them. We're going to get them to say a 94 out of a hundred, right? We go through that high level, keep it simple, and then close the sale by showing them the difference between the current state, future state. So that's what an audit looks like. And I'll go through here. Just kind of want to share this, this quick thing that a, a, one of our clients, Mike Bloomfield here said that audit is a storyteller. And I love that because he said it's allowing him to take all that techie talk and format it into a simple story that his clients understand. And using story, it's a very powerful way to tell, to tell folks what you do and how you do it. So he loved it for that reason. So audit, what is what does it do? It turns the technical MSP data into something anyone can understand. You set up your template, plug in the details, and then you just generate that report. Tell a story to your prospect consistently with confidence that the deal is going to close. It follows a professional sales process. And I can, I can go over that more in the demo because we won't have time here. There's a lot of sales psychology to audit. And it really does follow that sales process that will help and guide you through educating and getting your customers event ultimately to take your advice. And it works wonders in business reviews as well. So whatever you call them, TBRs, QBRs, strategic business reviews. So the sales process, the audit method is all about showing them that current state, right? We're, we're going to very high level, like on that first slide, it's a sum called the summary impact page. Very, very simple, very high level. The middle part where we go over those categories, we don't get too deep into the weeds, right? We do very, very simple. And I had, a, I, I've had MSPs kind of push back on me when they get to this point, because they're like, oh, I got one block for, for this one thing. And I've got a, only 150 characters where I can, I want to put more details in there. So I started asking him questions about what kind of details he wants to put in. I said, and I asked him, I said, what, what's a typical thing that you have a problem with that you see all the time? And he said, firewalls. Always, Every time we go in there, we got to put a, a different firewall in. And I explain, I asked him, what do you tell your customers when you've got to put a new firewall in? And he goes into this technical explanation. I'm like, I, I don't understand what you just said. Give me the bottom line. Why are you going to put a new firewall in my business? And he said, we don't support the one you have. 
that's usually the answer. And I said, why don't you just say that to them? I understand that. That's, that's understandable to me. And he kind of just stared at me. He goes, oh, okay, I get it. That's what it's all about. It's just get to the point. Really, really simple, right? We go next page here, if I can get to it. Tell a story with a picture, right? So if it's confusing, we're going to turn to the infographic that helps explain that complex thing that they don't understand. Everything's all about keeping it really, really simple. And then the future state, we want to show them where we're going to take them. We want to keep it to a business level, right? So instead of these bullet points being just technical details, they are, here's what's wrong with it. Here's how it's going to impact your business. And then we close that deal. So I could go over all sorts of testimonials, but I'm going to run out of time if I do that. I want to get to one of these here that I really love. And I hear this again and again. It's the visual simplicity of audit that makes it work. It's about the business impact and doesn't get mired in the tech. I use it on new sales and in business reviews with amazing results. And, and that's what we hear. The big thing that our clients tell us that they, they all kind of have in common, that they're much more profitable than those when, before when they weren't using a tool like this. They close more sales, they get more upsells, they make more profits, and they save a ton of time by automating that sales process into a repeatable and predictable selling system. So I'm going to close up with a quick story, and I have no idea what I was doing here. It looked like I was going to punch them or maybe show them what's hidden in my hand. I have no idea. But this is one of my favorite stories. A client came up to us at a booth at an event, and he was really excited to share. And he was very, I think he had like a New York accent, so he was, he was very like animated. And he was telling me he had this client that was driving him crazy for over a year. He goes, I've been practically begging this client to implement MFA, multi-factor authentication in his business, because they identified that a lot of the problems and the needless open tickets that his team was having were due to this specific company not using MFA. He'd go in every quarter in his business reviews for meetings, and he'd explain what MFA is, why the customer needs it, and the client always declined. For you MSPs listening, I'm sure you're all nodding your heads going, oh, I have a client like that, or two, or three, or, or 50. So he goes, you know what, I'm going to give audit a try. I'm going to see what happens. And he set up his report for the client, lots of green, because they've been working with this client for a long time, but he made MFA, one red block on the report, in this sea of green. Then the client looks at this as he's going through, he stops and he goes, whoa, 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 why is that red? What the hell is that? And the MSP goes, well, that's MFA. And the client goes, and so he goes to me, he goes, the client said something crazy to me. He goes, what's MFA? And the, and my client, our client, the audit user goes, it's crazy because this MSP, like he wanted to, he wanted to smack him, right? He wanted to yell at him. He's like, I've been telling you about MFA for a year now. So he resisted the urge to, to do that. And he told him what it was. And the guy goes, How, that sounds important. Should we have that? And, and now this, you know, our client is, is, wants to smack himself in the forehead. So he goes, yes, it is really important. You should probably do that. And then the next crazy thing that the client said is how much is it going to cost to turn that box green? MSP client told him and the client said, okay, sounds fair. Let's do it. And the MSP could not believe how easy it was to sell him something that he'd been begging him and hitting a brick wall with for the past year. And that's really what the moral of this story is that this MSP is able to do that because he took all the tech details out and he hit him with that psychology of, oh my God, that, that something wrong, right? He, the, the, the client can see something's wrong and he is interested in understanding what that is and why it's important. And uh, that you'll hear that with client after client after client will tell you the same story. So the client says, yes, service is up, tickets are down, everyone's happy. Moral of the story, audit gets them to buy what they need without friction or price objections. And one of our biggest clients said it simply, he goes, it, audit just gets my clients to take your, take my advice. That's, it's that simple. So the cool thing here is that we give you guys a free, five free licenses today to start using audit, close more deals, see it for yourself. Try it on a couple of your clients. Pick a client that won't take your advice, has been pushing back on something and go see how magical it is when you use it. So if you go to auditforit.com slash get audit free, or you can go to auditforit.com, just click on the sign up for free. You'll get five free licenses. And that is my 10 minutes.
Thank you so much. That was awesome. And yeah, I tell you, um, you know, one of the key things that you mentioned is the confused mind never buys. And uh, uh, I mean, that that is just so true. You know, I am a very visual person. And I think most are, you know, we're in a very, of course, very, you know, technical line of business. Yeah. And um, it is up to us. It is our responsibility to help the prospect understand what we're selling and what it will do for them. And we got to keep in mind, if we don't, the, the competition will. And so leveraging a tool like audit helps you to achieve that. So um, very, very good presentation, Mike. Thank you much for that. Um, very shortly, you'll be able to jump into uh, audit's demo room. Um, until then, we're going to jump into our next presenter, which is Gretel. And uh, Gretel is with Comet. A good. I, I should. I should first say good morning, Gretel, instead of good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> now I'm like maybe I shouldn't have said it 6 a.m. here. You'd be expecting me to just be like mumbling and <laughs> like saying words, but sure, strung exactly. together like half coherently. I'm, I'm here and I'm I'm awake and and I'm I'm gonna I, I'm gonna pitch you. I love it. So Gretel, um, we're gonna put you in the in the hot seat. You got to tell us one one thing unique about you that nobody knows. Well, then I once killed a man, but I guess this is when I, okay, this is not, not, not that kind. Okay. Not that kind of secret. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I've looked and I would be very surprised if there was another person with the same name as me. I don't think there's ever been another Gretel Bata, but it's just the last name is just so niche. Gretel even is like, who, who even has that name now after 1950s, the 1950s. Um, yeah. so I think that's yeah. like, I've looked and I've searched and I could not find anyone else with the same name. That is, that it's, is awesome. I have the same thing. There is no other Dan Tomaszewski <laughs> out there. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I completely can relate to you. So, uh, awesome I love Awesome for usernames. It's like. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so Gretel, um, you are up. We're going to set the timer for 10 minutes for you. You can go ahead and uh, launch your presentation and we're going to hear from, from you all about Comet. Cool. Um, the participant sharing for me is still disabled, so just probably need to. Oh, we will we will fix that very quickly here. <laughs> all right, you're all set now. Cool. Yeah, let me do that. All right, just share, um, just checking that everyone can see my screen. We got it. Thank you. Okay, so um, again, yeah, thank you for um, the intro, Dan. Uh, my name is Gretel. I am from Comet, and um, I'm part of a wonderful team who have made this awesome product, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. So let's get started. Um, so just a little bit of a background. Um, in the early 2000s, our founding team ran a large backup MSP in New Zealand. Um, around 2010, they sold this business and they focused on, um, oh wait, just a sec. Right. Um, so, um, so yeah, so in 2010, they sold this business and they focused on commercializing my client, which is another tool that monitors and manages various um, off the shelf backup solutions. Um, during this time, it became clear that the market needed a backup vendor that focused on serving the channel. Um, and with all our years of experience in the backup space, um, we began a closed beta in, of Comet in 2015. Uh, we tested and iterated based on customer feedback um, and taking all of that experience and all of that um, industry knowledge. In 2017, um, we did some, we had some breakthrough um, r and in R&D and we launched Comet. Um, and now we are a new um, player in the industry. Oh, sorry. Right now, so what? Um, why would you choose Comet? What's in it for you as an MSP? Um, well, Comet Backup is an all-in-one platform for businesses and IT providers. We provide an intuitive and easy-to-use web console, which I will demo to you later. So if you want to see how Comet works, how to conf um, start configuring, and what features you can use, um, join me in the 
breakout room. Um, so from the web console, you can remotely manage and protect devices to backup critical files, folders, um, databases, emails. I will show you all of the protected, we call them protected item types, all of the data types that you can back up with Comet. Um, you have total control over your the backup environment as you choose where the data is stored. Um, you can back up to a local on-prem location um, or any of the leading cloud uh, providers, which again, I'll show you all of your options later. Um, you can host us, um, the Comet server yourself, or you can use one that's hosted by us. Um, your business can save time with built-in reporting, which again, I'll also show you in the demo later. So you'll get those notifications if a backup fails or if there's a warning. Um, you can set custom policy settings and um, push bulk, bulk updates to your devices. Um, you slash storage costs with, with world-class deduplication, which encrypts and compresses the data. And I'll go through the technology um, in a bit. Uh, Comet keeps businesses safe by providing IT teams with fast, reliable, and secure backups is, I guess, the main thing, our main goal. Um, we You can deliver business continuity and increase confidence by guarding against disaster, obviously by using Comet. Now, the technology that I was referring to earlier, um, what really sets us apart um, is our chunking technology, which allows us to provide fast bandwidth efficient um, backups um, because the duplication is client side. So you save on storage space. Uh, you don't have to, full, to do full re-uploads um, after the first backup, all of the other, the, um, the subsequent backups are um, incremental. So you'll never have to um, re-upload the file again. And again, um, backups are incremental forever. Um, so no full re-uploads needed. Um, your oldest backup can restore just as fast as your most recent one. And there's no need for differentials and delta, uh, delta merging. And last data, um, as far as security is concerned, data is compressed and encrypted during backup, transit, and rest. The only time that data is unencrypted is during a restore. Um, and yeah, so if that's one concern, definitely um, feel, uh, you, you can feel reassured that your data is secure with Comet. Now, just a quick, um, just wanted to show you how Comet works and uh, just a quick run through on, I guess, the architecture. Uh, the Your backups are easily configured and managed um, your users and your devices through the Comet server, as you'll see on the, um, the in the diagram. Um, you can self-host the Comet server, or you can let us host it, so you don't have to worry about maintenance. And you can just focus on your business and um, auditing your customers and just making sure that you know they're doing what they're they're reporting issues and stuff like that. Um, the Comet backup client is installed on the on the device um, to be backed up. And then once the client software is installed in the device, you're logged in as a user, um, it can then be controlled through the server. You don't need any third-party software or RMM to make changes. You can do all of the, um, you can control everything from the server. Um, the customers have the option to store their backups in the cloud or to local storage. Um, and you can also directly send your backups to the cloud, um, have a direct to cloud backups. Um, you, your backups don't need to go through the Comet server unless you'd like to um, replicate data, in which case you can set it that way. Um, so Comet is a very flexible solution and we'll cover your options um, in the next slide, which are just, um, I, I think we want to say it with Comet that we are storage agnostic in, in that we want to provide customers, we want to give you the option to configure a wide variety of storage options, either on-prem or pretty much any S3 compatible cloud storage. Um, we sometimes get asked who our recommended storage provider, usually in onboarding calls. Um, I take a lot of the onboarding calls. They'd be like, well, who, what, what should we do? Who should we store with? And uh, our answer is always, it depends on what your requirements are. What are your business goals? What's the main concern? Like, what's the most important thing that you need to deliver to your um, uh, end customers, to your end users? Um, some customers do want um, storage bundled with their backup service. Before we we are a soft a backup software. That's that's what we do. Um, but we and we didn't used to offer storage bundled with backups. 
but we got asked a lot. So I guess that's a use case for a lot of customers. Um, so we provided that through Comet Storage powered by Wasabi. We offer Wasabi at no markup. Um, it's automatically configured with Comet servers and it's, it's charged along with your backup service. So if you're um, an MSP who just wants one pane of glass, I don't want to have a separate storage account and a backup account. I just want the one account. Um, then this would be the option for you. Um, we can, and then to the right, um, to the right, you'll see the types of data that we can back up. Um, these are what we call protected items. Um, so you can back up basic files and folders, or let's say if you need to back up this image for bare metal restores, um, which ones are the other popular ones? 365 is a popular one. Hyper-V VMs, um, these are all possible with Comet. And we are very, we're very excited about the new product. We are um, developing support for VMware backups. Um, I think we're beta testing that now. So stay tuned for more on that front. And last, I don't want to kill you with PowerPoint. <laughs> um, I think like if I would like, again, if you want to learn more about Comet, uh, please feel free to join me in the um, breakout room. But just before I go, I just um, wanted to, uh, point you to where you can sign up. It's just visit us, uh, visit us at cometbackup.com. Um, we are, we have always been 100% channel focused. We're here to support your business and make you successful. Um, it's so easy to start a trial account. When you get to the, um, to the site, just sign up. There's no need to add a credit card. Um, and I'd recommend signing up now because you get access to all of the features. There's no trial version. You get the full suite. Um, nothing is withheld. And if you decide to convert your account into and start using Comet as a regular account, you keep all of your settings so there's no need to start over. Um, so you just carry on from trial. Um, so, and we believe that backup should be, of course, a core offering for every MSP. And we're here to help you grow your business and protect your customers. So for everyone who wants to try out Comet, um, if you use the promo code elevator pitch when you sign up, um, you'll get an additional $50 on your trial. So that would just extend um, what you can test, different use cases and setups that um, configurations that you can set with Comet. Um, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me at hello at cometbackup.com or join me at the um, breakout room and I'll show you what you can do through Comet. Awesome, Gretel. Thank you so much. And um, as we all know, you know, as Gretel mentioned, uh, you know, backup is one of the core components of our service offering. And uh, you guys uh, definitely hit many of those check boxes that are important, you know, simple pricing, two factor, um, HIPAA, GDPR uh, compliance, uh, multi language support, fully brandable, lots of solid things that uh, many of MSPs are looking for. And uh, also, thank you very much for the additional uh, incentive of the $50 uh, with that uh, elevator pitch promo code. So um, thank you so much, Gretel. And we're going to move on to our next presenter. And um, that next presenter is going to be Matthew. Matthew is with Wasabi. Um, some, some great synergies here um, from our previous pr uh, presenter. And um, so, Matthew, let's um let's jump to you know one thing unique about you. What 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 kind of information are you gonna give us? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Dan, for having me uh, this afternoon. Thank you everybody for joining as well. Um, one thing unique about me, uh, I would say I've been lucky enough to travel to Iceland two times so far, um, which has been two of my favorite trips I've taken. So uh, I highly recommend anybody that hasn't been to Iceland to give it a shot. It is a very very unique spot. Um, absolutely beautiful. So definitely check it out. That's awesome. Um, so, so much, uh, you know, beautiful places to go around the world. And uh, there's, there's one more that we have to add to our, our bucket list, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Next one on mine is New, uh, New Zealand. So I'll take a trip out to see Gretel or something. <laughs> there we go. So we'll go ahead and uh, kick things off. You can share your presentation. We'll set the timer for 10 minutes and Matthew, you can take it away. All right. Go. Okay, can everybody see my screen all right? We see it, yep. Beautiful. All right, everybody, yeah, thank you very much again. Um, so Wasabi, um, really high level, you know, today we can go over a few pieces of who Wasabi is, 
what we're doing um, from a cloud storage perspective, some competitive advantages, um, and dive into some features and things that we're doing that really help our MSP partners. Um, I work on the channel side for Wasabi, work a lot with our MSP team uh, to make sure that we are utilizing and developing new features that MSPs can really take advantage of to be able to help their customers with cloud storage. You know, the cloud is something that um, more and more customers are adopting. You know, it's been a big wave of customers getting into cloud storage or offsite secure storage. Um, and I think now more than ever, it's becoming a necessity um, rather than a want or a, a new idea. It's something that everybody is going to eventually be moving towards. Um, and Wasabi is doing some very unique things to help out with that. So just to jump into who Wasabi is, in case anybody is unfamiliar with us outside of Sushi, um, Wasabi is essentially cloud object storage as a service, fully S3 compatible, um, comparable to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform. Um, so you kind of think of those type of S3 storage platforms. Wasabi is doing that type of technology. Um, but again, we're kind of unique on our own as well, which I'll dive into in a little bit here. Um, so one thing about Wasabi, we were founded back in 2015. So a relatively newer company uh, founded by the same founders that actually brought Carbonite to the market. So Jeff Flowers and David Friend. Um, I like to mention that because as a newer company, sometimes there's a little bit of a thought of, oh, who is Wasabi? Who do they, you know, who do they think they are? What are they doing? Uh, do they have a good leadership team? And, you know, quick answer to that is that we do. We have a successful leadership team that's really driving Wasabi and seeing a broad scope of the market from a backup perspective and data storage perspective. So um, great leadership team doing a lot since 2015. We've grown a bunch on um, the past eight years or so. Um, and to kind of elaborate on what I said about S3 compatibility. So we are, again, fully S3 compatible, meaning we are a very versatile solution. So when you're thinking about Comet backup or any backup provider, those are the type of solutions that we can integrate directly into uh, utilizing the S3 API. Uh, when I show this slide, sometimes there's also a thought that, you know, we are just an extension of AWS or subsidiary or anything like that. Uh, truth be told, we are not tied to AWS. We just use this public API to be able to connect to all these use cases that you see down in the bottom right there for back recovery, archiving, surveillance, um, a wide range of use cases by using that API. Um, Wasabi, we own and operate all the equipment that we store your data on. We do use some data center vendors like Equinix, Megaport. Um, some of those big guys have very high tech secure facilities. We'll use those guys to kind of help with um, that perspective. But in terms of where we're storing your data, it's all owned and operated by Wasabi, which is very nice. So uh, again, kind of like what Greta was saying uh, in her presentation, we are you know, we try to be vendor agnostic as well and really understand, you know, what the customer needs. And when it comes to our S3 compatibility, who we're looping in with, um, again, does break down to what would be the best fit for them. And if Comet is a great solution for uh, that customer, you know, we can work perfectly with them to be that offsite storage location. So uh, again, a lot of different use cases we can work in um, and using this API makes it very easy for uh, our integrations to work with different backup providers. So what kind of makes Wasabi unique, uh, again, S3 storage is not something that is brand new. It's something that has been out there. AWS and Azure have been doing this for a little while now. Um, but what we try to do is be very cost effective in what we are doing. Uh, we developed a product that can come in at a fifth of the cost of AWS storage or Azure, Azure storage. Uh, we do not charge for any egress or API requests, so very predictable pricing. I'll jump into that in a little bit in a second. Um, while, while maintaining that low price point, you know, a good price tag, you know, there's nothing good about that unless you have a product that supports it. So strong performance and great security. So we try to hit all these points. Uh, we call it the three P's, you know, from a marketing perspective, price, performance, and protection. Um, this slide here gives you kind of a better look at pricing and what I was describing uh, previously. But again, it's really a flat fee type of pricing, which is something that it's not really seen in the cloud storage market. When you think about other cloud storage providers, 
typically there's a lot of different fees that come with that. So you think about monthly invoices that are increasing and decreasing. We see a lot of customers that are looking at Wasabi because they're just fed up with their storage bill being unpredictable. And we developed this model to make sure that it is very simple and easy to understand our pricing. We only have one product, one tier. Uh, we describe ourselves as hot cloud storage, one, because Sounds good with the Wasabi name. Uh, and two, because we do not charge for egress or anything. So it could be considered hot storage, but we have customers that are also using Wasabi as a cold tier or an archive tier, uh, just due to our price point. They need that extra storage location offsite. And that's where Wasabi can come in to be that secure, low cost uh, solution. So um, yeah, pricing wise, again, this chart kind of speaks for itself, but without charging those fees, we can really save your customers a lot of pain and money um, when it comes to the cloud storage here. This uh, chart is actually um, pretty jarring when you think about the cost people are and money they're spending on cloud storage for customers. Um, a report that we, we ran actually showed almost 50% of the price of cloud storage and the you know, what your customers are being charged is coming from fees compared to just the capacity itself. Uh, again, thinking about those ingress and egress fees and everything else that comes along with uh, the standard cloud storage providers, um, we don't charge any of that. Again, so limiting 50% of that cost, according to this chart, or at least a strong portion of what customers are paying if they're not using Wasabi, we can eliminate those fees, really save some good money on that cloud storage. Uh, performance wise, so this is also a good metric, a uh, good bar graph to show you, but really what this is saying here is that in comparison to our main competition, you're not cutting any corners when using Wasabi for performance. When you look at uploading data or retrieving your data, anything like that, you're going to see very strong performance. Um, about 90% of our customers are actually connecting to Wasabi over their public internet and um, not using a dedicated provider or anything like that, just using what they currently have in house. So by using that, they don't have to add additional costs to their storage. They can still get great upload speeds and download speeds just from what they currently have. So um, similar to what we were, uh, the other partners are saying here, we do also have a 30 day free trial uh, where you get one terabyte free of storage. And actually in that 30 day trial, you get a speed test and that speed test will show you uh, what the metrics kind of look like from a performance perspective when you're connecting to any of our data centers. And I'll show you where our data centers are located in a couple slides here. Uh, but yeah, performance wise, really good feedback from our customers. And you know, it's pretty well known that we aren't, again, compromising anything performance wise. Again, security wise, you know, when you think about cloud storage, the main reason behind it all is for data protection, uh, storing data offsite, an additional storage location, whatever the use case may be, it's all for additional data security. So these first two bullet points here, we have 11 nines of data durability and four nines of data availability. So your data will always be secure, always be accessible, we'll never lose a piece of your data. Um, so we had that strong reliability on the, the data side and the storage side for Wasabi. Uh, we also encrypt data while it's in transit and at rest with Wasabi, uh, multi-factor authentication. We also can provide data immutability with our object lock feature, which is a huge thing that's needed for customers. Uh, and then additionally, have all these compliances that are listed here that uh, we live up to and have are fully compliant with for anything for HIPAA, CGIS, uh, anything like that. So uh, good to have all those security metrics as well. As promised, here's the, the map of our storage regions. So US-based, we have four uh, data centers, two over in Virginia, one in Plano, Texas, and one in Hillsborough, Oregon. These are all tier four data centers, SOC 2 compliant, you know, very secure, as I've mentioned before. Uh, but again, we have this availability for you for the four different regions in the US, and you can choose where you store your data. We're not, we're not gonna push you to a certain region, whatever makes sense, makes most sense for you and provides you the best performance. That's where you can store your data. Um, so good look at where we're located uh, also globally as well. Um, and that's kind of the, the what I had to, to share with you guys. I In the um, the breakout session here, I mean, want to go into a little more about our account management toolkit. Um, this is some new features that we've really developed in the past few months to help our NSP partners, both white label Wasabi, kind of put your brand on the Wasabi storage, be able to bundle us into maybe a 
solution you're already offering customers or an as a service type of model. We have a few pretty cool solutions and features that will um, that really benefit our MSB partners. So uh, if you are interested in learning about that, feel free to jump into the, the breakout session. Uh, I'll also show you kind of what Wasabi console looks like. But uh, yeah, again, if you're interested in the, the free trial, just go to wasabi.com. Um, there's a try free button right in the middle as you log on. Uh, you can jump in there and uh, start your free trial for 30 days and get a terabyte free of storage. Awesome, Matthew. Thank you so much for that. Um, Wasabi delivering high performance at affordable rates. And one of the things that really captured my attention is not having to worry about the unpredictability of costs, that you don't have to worry about all the additional fees that could be adding up and, uh, and surprising you. So that that is awesome. And, uh, and also with that 30-day trial, uh, you have nothing to lose. So I uh, appreciate you guys offering that to us. So um, next up, we're going to be opening up our demo rooms in just a moment here so that uh, you can see some hands-on as well as get any questions that you might have answered. Now, before we do that, we're going to be throwing a poll up right now. And uh, with this with this poll, you'll be able to identify which um, of the vendors that you'd like to hear more from, and they will reach out to you. As a reminder, please hang tight for the entire um, our entire hour here because we have $250 of hard cold cash that will be given away to one lucky attendee. So we'll be doing that right after all of our demo rooms are completed. And um, so with that being said, we're gonna jump into our demo rooms right now. Um, we'll wait just a few moments just so that you can uh, complete the poll, but just to give you a little background. So what's gonna happen is at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a breakout rooms tab. Um, if you don't see an icon, you'll see that under the more tab. You'll be able to go into the breakout rooms, pick which breakout room that you wish to go to, now, you do have the option to be able to start out in one breakout room and you can bounce to another. So you'll be able to jump into all three of them as you wish. Um, what's going to happen is once um, we are at the our time limit for our demo rooms um, being complete, we will set a timer for 120 seconds and everybody will come back into the main stage. We will, um, at that point, do our announcement of our winner of the $250. And... Um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and open up our demo rooms now. Um, if for some reason you have any questions or you're not sure of how to get into the demo rooms, uh, go ahead and throw a message into chat and we can push you into one of those demo rooms on our own. Um, and uh, if, if you don't select a demo room, we will just randomly pick, uh, put you into one of those demo rooms so that uh, you, you are in there and you're able to jump around. So uh, for the, everybody out there in, uh, in streaming world, we will go silent for about 20 minutes and uh, that all, all the more reason to join us in the live call. So we are doing this each month, our elevator pitches. So next month, if you didn't join us live in the, in the, the uh, call itself, be sure to join us next month uh, live in the call.